yeah, I will say that it's weird that I got this album, but I, you know, I recognize the album cover, um, and I know it's a highly, uh, you know, it's a classic album. I know that. Yeah. So um, here's the thing. My uh, my mic died, uh, and you know, to spare you the the pain of, of listening to the uh, camera recording uh, of the audio uh, I'm gonna do this uh, pretty awkward voice over here um, but yeah let's just get started um, here we see Skylarking by XTC uh, came out in 1986 this is a pretty good uh, German copy that I got um, and what makes this album so special is that it it's a concept album and a really really bloody good concept album at that uh, it was the producer Todd Rundgren's idea I think when he heard the demos for this album he um, he immediately saw it as a concept album you know, around the year and the seasons uh, and the summer and all that kind of stuff. And that makes it a really solid um, summer album, I think. It's very lush. It's beautifully made. Uh, it's got so many good songs on here. Uh, the uh, single Dear God isn't on my, my copy, but I don't mind actually because it's... It wasn't meant to be part of the album initially, anyways. Uh, but yeah, uh, and I especially enjoy Colin Moulding's songs on this album. He actually has five songs um, that he wrote, which is pretty uncommon for an XTC album because usually they will include two or three Colin Moulding songs, especially later on in their career which I think is a shame because he's a really good songwriter. Uh, but obviously I do enjoy um, Andy's songs a lot as well, especially That's Really Super Super Girl, uh, Earn Enough For Us, Summer's Cauldron and the Transition Into gra Grass, I think is phenomenal. So definitely check that one out. Uh, next up we have What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Uh, which I actually found uh, and picked up yesterday at a flea market. Uh, so it was pretty cheap. Um, and yeah, I can ask myself the, the same question, honestly. What's going on? Because I don't know what's going on. Um, I have never listened to Soul uh, before. You know, I'm mostly into weird genres like industrial music and you know, IDM and, and uh, EBM, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, I will say that it's weird that I got this album, but I, you know, I recognize the album cover um, and I know it's a highly, uh, you know, it's a classic album, I know that, highly regarded by, you know, music fans and critics. Um, and so I thought, yeah, why not pick it up, you know? It's always fun to buy records, right? Uh, and so I did, and I sat down and listened to it, and I realized that it's actually really, really good. You know, the production is so warm and sort of inviting. I'm not used to an album that is this easy to listen to and enjoy. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really solid album. Maybe it's a bit on the shorter side, uh, but I don't think that's like a big problem uh, because all the songs are great. Um, so yeah, I've only heard it once, but uh, that one time I really enjoyed it and I will definitely spin uh, more Marvin Gaye, I think. Um, I don't know what I'm saying now in the video. Um, I guess I'm talking about how cheap it was or 
how much I enjoyed it or whatever, you know. Um, and there's the back. Yeah. And next up, we have a single by the Depeche Mode. Uh, and it's Behind the Wheel uh, on the A side from their album Music for the Masses, which is uh, one of my favorite Depeche Mode albums, I think. You know, it's very well made. And especially the tour that accompanied, accompanied it, I think, uh, is, was it really good. Although, obviously, I wasn't born at the time, but uh, I've seen the documentary or, you know, the film 101. And I've also seen, I've also, uh, I also have the live album from that period. And I think it was, you know, probably the peak of the Pesh Mode. Although I really enjoyed their 90s output as well, especially Ultra. Uh, but yeah, this single is great. Uh, and I bought it mostly for the B-side, I'll admit, which is uh, Route 66, a great cover song. Uh, next up, uh, I also picked up two CDs, actually, uh, because I kind of want to expand my CD collection. Um, I do obviously enjoy vinyl more because of, you know, the big artwork, the um, inner sleeves, you know, the feel of the vinyl. Uh, not a big fan of pops and crackles, um, but yeah. So the first CD I got is Portishead by Portishead. Uh, I don't know why they didn't come up with, you know, some other title, but whatever. Um, and I actually really like this album. I know most people know Portishead for, for their first album, Dummy, which, you know, it's a classic. Um, and I get why people enjoy it. Uh, and, you know, it's probably my favorite album by them as well. Uh, but their second album, I think, it's also really solid. And I saw an interview with them a while ago uh, and they were talking about this album and they said that their first album um, was you know they thought it was a bit too soft uh, or you know people saw it as easy listening music you know something that you just put on in the background um, and don't pay that much attention to um, but with this one they they wanted to make something harder something that really forces you to listen uh, more properly if that makes sense and i really think they succeeded with that uh, it doesn't have that smoothness of their debut album uh, but i really enjoy a lot of songs on here actually uh, like over uh, cowboys elysium um, western eyes all mine you know there's so many great songs on here and i almost think that all the songs could be singles actually uh, and it's got this nice film noir sort of 20s hollywood vibe or something uh next up we have broken uh the ep broken uh by nine inch nails uh, as you can probably tell i am quite a big fan of nine inch nails and trent Reznor's music so I had to pick this one up. Uh, I don't think I will be uh, getting the uh, vinyl edition anytime soon now that I have the CD. Uh, because, you know, being a 90s uh, release, uh, it's just more accessible uh, to get on CD. Um, it's not the uh, Diggy Pack that they released, which I think is also really cool. Uh, but yeah, and this is probably the hardest music that Trent ever did, I think. You know, people probably thought that Pretty Hate Machine was hard, you know. And when you hear uh, their second album, The Downward Spiral, it's also pretty hard and aggressive. But this EP is, you know, really killer. And I think my favorite track on it is Last. You know, it's just great music uh now i'm saying something that i don't know i forgot what i said here 
I probably said if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Maybe subscribe, you know, I promise to upload more often whenever I get new records. Um, but yeah, goodbye.